Hi, I'm David Andrietta with the Democrat and Chronicle, and I'm here with my colleague, Gary Craig, uh, to lend some perspective about some stories that have been in the news lately uh, regarding two local judges. Uh, yesterday, Gary, was a banner day for judges uh, in the news, uh, one in trouble and one getting out of trouble. We had two cases, one involving S State Supreme Court Judge James Pampiano, who is now famous for having dismissed the murder charge against Charlie Tan, and the other case involved uh, Rochester City Court Judge Leticia Stasio, who was convicted last year of a, of a, of a DWI and has uh, had subsequent issues with that. First, let's turn to the Pampiano case. What happened yesterday? Why was he in the news again, Gary? Uh, the Commission on Judicial Conduct, which hears complaints of alleged misconduct by judges, uh, ruled that, that uh, Judge Pampiano, when he was presiding over the Charlie Tan case, in particular after a mistrial had been determined, uh, basically breached judi judicial ethics because he talked to media, including yourself, uh, after that decision about the mistrial. And, and basically they said that he went beyond the bounds of what is allowed and it's very restrictive what a judge can talk about with a pending case. And that case was still pending at that point because there had yet to be a decision to retry. And in particular they said he went you know, far afield with the media interviews, in particular one statement where he, he painted Charlie Tan, who was accused of killing his father, uh, as a particularly sympathetic defendant, which is not something you want to hear from a judge. And, and then he was also, you know, uh, the censure, the formal censure, which is the punishment, the discipline just short of removal from the bench. It's the, the next most severe uh, for what he told the assistant district attorney, Bill Gargan, when later Judge Pampiano, as we all know, dismissed the criminal charges against Charlie Tan. And Bill Gargan asked if he could intervene with a comment and Judge Pampiano threatened to handcuff in him, him and jail him. Yeah, and I was, I was there that day in court like you were. And uh, I, I remember that very specifically. It, it, it shocked, I think, all of us yeah. in the gallery. Um, uh, to add a little bit of perspective as to the, the background as to where Pampiano may have been coming from, I do believe, if I remember correctly, that uh, Prosecutor Gargan had suggested that he may be suffering from amnesia. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it right. was not a one-way street. <laughs> yes, I, th I think right. you can be clear on that. I, I think uh, you know, Mr. Gargan uh, was surprised that the case was going to be dismissed and perhaps that uh, escalated his emotions a little. <laughs> sure, but it, it doesn't appear to me that, that Gargan was out of bounds himself. Uh, you know, there's um, uh, you know, there's been no, I don't know where there would be such a ruling, but there's been no claims of such. And, uh, and you know, perhaps except for that one comment, you know, I think, you know, which people may take issue with or they may not. Right. Uh, I don't think there's been any claims that he did anything that was, you know, ethically untoward. Uh, explain, like, let's talk about what a censure is. There are really yes. four levels of penalties that the State Judicial uh, Commission on Judicial yeah. Conduct can, can mete out. Uh, and if I'm remembering them correctly, one is removal, that's the most right. serious, censure, admonition, and uh, like a letter of, of a reprimand. Yeah, or something I, I, to mean, that I what mean, what is the difference between the latter three censures, I mean, admi uh, admonitions, and letters? And you don't know how many times I, I've asked you know, the one person with a commission that can speak uh, about this. And, and, and practically, at, you know, when you take them at this moment in time, if you are hit with any one of those short of removal, there, there really is no difference. It's basically said you've done a bad thing. However, let's say hypothetically a judge later is accused of doing a bad thing and is found to you know, be guilty, so to speak, of doing that bad thing. If, if he or she has a censure on their record, that probably makes removable, removal much more likely as opposed to if they'd been hit with a lesser punishment. Okay. Really now, uh, we're expecting Pampiano to be in the news again sometime soon yeah. uh, uh, involving an appellate decision in the Charlie Tan case. Um, uh, the, the prosecution, the, the people, Monroe County, have, have appealed the case, uh, the mistrial, yes. uh, the, sorry, the decision to dismiss the, 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 the case. And uh, we're expecting a decision, I think, sometime soon, right? I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's this Friday. Uh, uh, cases that were heard earlier uh, this term, so to speak, or this month, often come out and do this past Friday or this Friday, and there's a little bit of a pause between the next one. It, it could be longer, but you know, there's a chance it could be this Friday. And, and basically the decision will be, did Judge Pampiano rightfully, you know, within the, the bounds of the law, dismiss the case? I mean, the, uh, the DA's office is, is basically claiming that, that you know, 
he did not follow sort of the, the strictures of law, so to speak. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously Charlie Tan's attorney is saying, hey, you know, he has practically been found innocent right. by Judge Pampiano's ruling, and to give them permission to retry him would be double jeopardy. Yeah. So and we I, should have a ruling soon. And I think all observers of, of that case are, are considering that a long shot for Monroe County. Yeah. Um, but how will the, the State Commission on Judicial Conduct's ruling on Pampiano affect that case, if at all? You know, it's, it's really two separate tracks. I mean, the commission was looking at this, these allegations of misconduct based on you know, the, the, the interviews and the, you know, the courtroom decorum. And, uh, and the appellate issue is completely different. It's just what Judge Pampiano did when he granted what's known as a trial order dismissal and dismissed the criminal charge and, and whether he could legally do that and, uh, and if it was binding, if he did it. And so they're, they're really completely two different tracks. Mm. Um, if, uh, and well, I've got you here. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I mean, you, you and I, but particularly you, you've been following the, the Judge Estacio case very closely. You, sure. you wrote a column today, mm -hmm. I know, that, uh, that you know, talked about how, while there may be this sort of public sentiment that she's been treated differently uh, than others, that it perhaps isn't so, I'm just sort of you know, interested in your thoughts the way that case is going. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, what we had yesterday, uh, as you know, uh, Leticia Stasio, a Rochester City Court judge, she was uh, convicted of, of drunken driving uh, last year. Uh, she has been found guilty of violating her sentence uh, once. She got a conditional discharge sentence. And what that basically is, is that you're, uh, you're released without supervision. You are discharged into the world and uh, with, with set conditions. And if you don't violate these conditions over the course of a year, then all is well. You'll still have the conviction on your record, but you know that's basically the end of your sentence. She has been found, she was found uh, last fall to have violated uh, a condition of her mm -hmm. sentence, one of those conditions being that she shouldn't be drinking. She was found to have been, been drinking in the fall, and she had pleaded and that, guilty to that was to with such. an interlock device issue that, similar, right? That was an interlock device, yeah. Uh, lately, she's been brought up on four new uh, mm -hmm. uh, allegations of, of violations, three of which involved an interlock device and one of which involved drinking on two separate occasions. Mm -hmm. Uh, yesterday, she beat all of those all of those charges. We can get into that in, in a minute. But you know, leading up to uh, that ruling yesterday, uh, I've heard countless, countless times through the course of these months. Uh, there's a lot of anger out there about Judge Estacio, and I've heard from countless people that if it were you or me or Joe Schmo in her position, we'd be in jail, mm -hmm. or we'd be getting some sort of harsher penalty than she has gotten. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to check the record on that. Uh, it's impossible, of course, to check every DWI case in Monroe County, but so what I did was try to limit it to the cases that she presided over when she was on the bench. As we know, she's been stripped of her, of her judicial duties. And uh, uh, she presided over 31 cases, uh, DWI cases. Uh, she issued rulings in 29 of them. The other two, she was, had been removed from the bench by the time yeah. you know, the, the, the case ended up mo moving to another job, judge. And in those 29 rulings, you know, only, only six of those people uh, were on probation and three of them were sent to jail. Um, so the notion that uh, you know anyone who gets a DWI and flouts the law by by drinking and driving is going to end up in jail just simply isn't true. In the vast majority of those cases, 23 out of those 29 cases, uh, the people were a lot like Judge Estacio. They were first-time uh, DWI offenders. They didn't injure anyone in the in the process of committing their crime, and they were treated as. Astacio was, which is to say they got a conditional discharge of a year. They had to pay fines, typically around $900 or so by, all the, by the time the fines and surcharges are added up. They had an interlock device on their car. They had to speak to a victim, uh, DWI victim impact panel. All of these things are pretty standard. And I, she has been treated, I think, typically, just like anyone else would for it, who would be in her position. She has no criminal, criminal past. And indeed, uh, three, uh, I think five of the people that she sentenced on DWI charges ended up violating their conditional discharges, just like just she, did. she did. Yeah. And and the the uh, all of those violations went to different judges because she had already been removed yeah. from those cases. However. Um, if you look at the penalties that were meted out to those people, they really run the gamut. I mean, the most severe being three weekends in jail for someone who violated their conditions. Uh, two of those people got uh, community service. Uh, one was four hours, minimal. Uh, the other one was 48, a little more 
uh, mm. stringent. Uh, one of the cases was dismissed outright, and another case, uh, the conditional discharge was just what they call restored, meaning it was just extended right, basically. Exactly. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened to Astacio. When she was found guilty of violating her conditional discharge last fall, her conditional discharge was extended for an additional six months. So she's now looking at instead of uh, August of 2016 to August of 2017 having to live with this conditional discharge which means the interlock device and likely not being able to practice on the bench mm -hmm. uh, she's now looking at extending that till February of 2018. Um, you, we could argue all day long that these penalties are not harsh enough for for people who drink and drive. It's a heinous crime fraught with all kinds of potential for real damage and, and to change lives. However, the judicial system is such that these ki the, these people who have been com committed these crimes, um, you know, are have, have been treated pretty much the same, yeah. and she's and really as, no as different. As you would argue, they should be. Right? It shouldn't be two standards, basically. No, I, I, absolutely. Now, should judges be held to a higher standard uh, in their jobs? Yeah, and we can talk about that. I mean, she, it looks like she is. Uh, uh, being investigated right now by the State Commission on Judicial Conduct. I don't know that the commission has ever acknowledged that they typically don't acknowledge they, yeah. these these, the, their investigations, but it was brought up in court uh, on a, a couple of occasions that she personally met with the commission. Yeah, she, she made the point that one of the dates in question, she was actually driving to a commission interview, so it right. became public then. One of the dates of her alleged violations. E exactly. Right. And so, and just sort of segueing to that, Commission on Judicial Conduct co coming up again here, um, what happened yesterday, the sort of, you know, the clearing of her, so to speak, with these different violations, do you see that possibly playing into the commission ruling or you know, that sort of say? Uh, yeah, it, mm -hmm. it, it could possibly uh, play into that ruling. So the, the, the commission has never removed anyone uh, for a DWI alone, mm -hmm. okay? They typically, any judge for a DWI alone. Uh, and I, I've looked at all of those cases stretching back to the 1970s when the commission was first formed. Uh, out of the 27 judges disciplined for, for some sort of alcohol re abuse related offense, uh, two have been removed. Um, but it was often after multiple infractions not, after the not first. Not just a single DWI. Not just a single DWI. Uh, now, you could argue that Astacio has a single DWI plus one violation of her, of her sentence that happened last fall and potentially faced four more violations that were all dismissed yesterday. So, uh, you know, I, I, I really hesitate to say on how the commission will rule. Um, if, if we were looking at just a single violation with, sorry, single conviction with no secondary violation, I would say that she's going to keep her job. Um, with the one violation, it's possible, I think, that she could lose it. However, I would, I would have argued that with four extra violations on that sentence, she would almost certainly be done for. And so this could be, the decision yesterday could be a real game changer for, for Astacio and the commission's decision. Yeah, it's probably, and you know, we spoke, uh, Judge Dorn, who's the administrative judge for the district, made the point yesterday, said nothing has changed as far as her judicial duties. She's still relieved of those duties. Uh, Nobody will say because people don't publicly acknowledge what's happening with a commission investigation or if there is a commission investigation, but I, I, I feel it's probably a safe assumption that he's waiting for a decision from there yeah. to see what to do. Yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, I, I want to talk a little bit more about, about her treatment by, by the court because yeah. um, you know, my column today really touched on how she has dealt with DWI cases in, in the past and how uh, really I think she's been treated, as I said, very typically. Uh, but yesterday's ruling will, you know, have some people upset. Um, we've again, heard from them on Twitter. <laughs> we've already heard from them on Twitter and Facebook. And she, again, she was facing four violations, three of which involved an interlock device, one of which involved uh, a, a drinking when she shouldn't have been, which is a violation of her, of her discharge, on two occasions. Let's break these down uh, and, and, and get to the heart of why these these. Uh, violations were dismissed. Yes. The drinking involved uh, alleged drinking on two separate occasions, one of which was a, uh, a Thanksgiving Day party where there were photographs of her taking what appeared to be engaging in some sort of drinking game. There was a bottle of 
of, I believe it was tequila, tequila I believe, yes, on the table. Tequila, yes. People seem to mm. be having a good time. Uh, what was the problem with that? That's, that certainly sounds like someone was engaging in a drinking party when they shouldn't have been drinking. What was the, what, what, why, why was that dismissed? Well, I, I mean, there, there is a threshold of evidence and right. to see somebody standing at a party with a cup, as the judge pointed out, how can you say definitively what's in the cup? And there were three people who testified that, that they went out of their way, to, well, her being one, but two testified they went out of her way to make sure she didn't have alcohol and she said she didn't have alcohol. She was said she's you know, just been very strict uh, about you know making sure of this since she obviously had the one lapse that was admitted in the ar earlier violation. Right, and these are these sort of red plastic, exactly. what they call solo cups. Yeah. You can't see what's in them. Right. right. Uh, the other uh, alleged drinking uh, episode took place um, at Market Place Mall in a yeah. restaurant in which uh, she was in an employee's restroom with uh, a, a few other women was told to, according to the testimony given by the security guard, was asked to leave that restroom. Uh, when they didn't comply initially, he testified that he pulled out his pepper spray and she allegedly said, you can't uh, yeah. spray me, I'm a judge. Yeah. He recognized her immediately from media reports and testified that he thought that, she, that, that her balance was off and she seemed to be slurring her words. Um, this man is, is trained. He's been working for 20 years in bars and nightclubs, uh, he testified. Um, he's trained to, to, to identify people who are intoxicated. But again, what seemed to be the problem there? You know, the, uh, the prosecutor made that exact point. Look, this guy, you know, how can you deny the word of this guy because he's been doing this for a long time? The judge, it seemed, took the whole context of the evening. And, and by testimony, she was there several hours longer. The, there, there was no After testimony. being removed from the bathroom. Exactly, yes. There, there was no, which again, by the account of her and others, that's where they were shown by an employee that said, this is where you should go. You know, here's the restroom you should use. Um, and, and basically the judge said, there's no testimony from the hours that passed after that incident that the guard says he saw her stumbling or drinking or buying drinks. There's no testimony that she purchased any drinks. Mm. So I think basically he, he looked, not basically, it's what he wrote. He said in the context of the evening, there seems to be this ample evidence beyond this you know, this one intersection of these folks that, that she was not drinking. Yeah, yeah, I, there, no, everyone who testified said that she did not have a drink or yeah. did not see her have a drink. Yeah, I mean, and she basically, I mean, again, you know, perhaps you could argue that her sister who testified as, as a biased, you know, witness, so perhaps, but, you know, but she testified that, you know, she basically sort of had to drag her out of the house, that she really wanted to get her to go out that evening. I was personally surprised that they didn't offer, the prosecution didn't offer any video ev evidence. I, I would imagine these places have video cameras, most establishments do. Yeah, it really just seemed that basically it just, you know, they were hanging their hat and maybe that's all they had and why the judge ruled as he did on the, the testimony of this one security guard. Yeah, and it raises another question of whether she has actually been, uh, f has faced more scrutiny than the average uh, DWI offender. I mean, if they're hanging their hat on testimony like that, oh, it's funny. is it enough? Is it enough to go with when, when, when they, the prosecution knows that no one else will testify that she was actually drinking and there's no evidence otherwise except for the word of a security guard? Yeah, and you, and you have was. to, I mean, can I definitively say this would happen? No, but you, because there was testimony that this place was packed and you have to wonder, I mean, it's not as if she hasn't been in the news. If she was stumbling around drunk, if somebody with her iPhone during the night wouldn't have said, hey, you know, look who I've got on video here. Right. And throughout the evening, apparently that never happened. Right. Yeah. And, and believe me, you know, I don't want to come across as an apologist for, for <laughs> Leticia Stasio. I mean, I, I do believe personally, and I, you know, in my job as a, as a columnist, I have the luxury of offering some co commentary on these issues. I won't ask you to, to speak yes. on it, but I mean, I do believe that judges should be held to a higher That's standard. It. And, and I, I think that, uh, uh, it would not surprise me, and I can't say that I'd be disappointed if the Commission on Judicial Conduct uh, uh, ended up removing her from, from the bench. Um, but in, in this case, yeah. on these violations, it seems to me that the judge ruled uh, uh, properly. The, the other three violations that she faced were, were interlock violations, you know, things that went wrong with her interlock device. Yes. This is the device on the car that stops the car from moving if you blow over a certain threshold, you know, the legal mm -hmm. limit for, for drinking and driving. And uh, uh, some of them, to be honest with you, the three, two of them seemed pretty minor. I'm not sure that any typical yeah. DWI offender would get brought up on these. One was uh, that she had failed to show up 
at a collision shop or uh, in a mechanic shop to have her IID interlock device serviced on the day that it was supposed to be serviced, but she had a five-day grace period right. to do so. Yeah. I mean, she had another five days to, to act, and yet the prosecution still chose to slap her with a violation on day one. Yeah, and you have to remember, she's obviously, she, she doesn't have a license, so she's trying to work within the constraints of, you know, getting yeah. in the car there. Huh? And, and that's no excuse. I yeah. mean, you know, no, but, 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 but she was still within those five days. Exactly, as, as the judge ruled and yeah. as I thought evidence clearly showed. The other, so. the other alleged violation was that uh, an, uh, an unauthorized person blew into mm -hmm. her, her device, which is true. It, it did happen to be her young son. Uh, who was, by the testimony and the evidence, sitting in the back seat of the car uh, when the device went off, it somehow pinged, it indicated yeah. that it needed someone to blow into it. Uh, uh, Mom, Judge Estacio, was in a store mm -hmm. and the kid blew into it. Uh, no, no, right. <laughs> you're, you're not allowed to do that, son. But is that a fault of yeah. Le Leticia Estacio's? Yeah. yeah, and the judge made the point that with all the, you know, the IED violations, which we're sort of mooted because he ruled there was a jurisdictional issue that Ontario County shouldn't have had a Monroe. Yeah. But, but he basically still then said, even beyond that, if that hadn't been a you know, decision maker, that you know, most of them he would have ruled there was not evidence. And the only one that uh, he would have ruled would have been more of a technical violation because there was a, a point zero 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 blow when she blew it. Right. The, the, third one, the third one involved yeah. her, uh, her daughter and her sharing yes. the car and she neglected, Estacio, uh, Judge Estacio neglected to turn the ignition off yeah. before daughter got in or vice versa. I can't yeah, I think, I think the other way where the daughter perhaps had started. Daughter drove the yeah, car first. And then, and then she, she took over and she did, you know, during this what's known as a rolling retest where you can then blow, you know, well, Ultimately, she she, monitored, she registered a point zero zero zero, which means no alcohol at all. Right. So the judge made that point. He said, "Look, yeah, perhaps I could have, you know, short of this jurisdictional issue, found this is a violation. But but even if so, I would have said it was quote minimal as mm -hmm. far as." Now I got a call from someone this morning who was criticizing uh, my work that uh, in my column today. Uh, interestingly enough, the, the the caller didn't leave his his name, but uh, the caller ID came, the, the caller ID came up as Oak Hill Country Club. <laughs> so <laughs> we know who hangs out there. <laughs> but in any case, <laughs> and not to put you on the spot, yeah, here, no. <laughs> but but in any case, um, I don't. But go ahead. <laughs> but in any case, he uh, uh, th this person said, you know, one thing I neglected in my column was that. Uh, to acknowledge that this, the, the monitoring and all this entire case has been prosecuted uh, by the Ontario County yes. DA's office and the monitoring of her interlock device was transferred to Ontario County to prevent any conflict of interest here, which, which sounds reasonable. But the issue w that the judge ruled on yesterday in voiding all of these IID mm -hmm. violations was that he never ordered it to go right. to Ontario County. Yeah. And that's a problem. Yeah, I mean, he was very specific on the law. He says, here's what the law requires. I mean, it, you may not like it. You may, you may think this is a technicality, but, but nonetheless, it's the law. And, and the law, as he said, was not followed. Yeah, the law requires that, uh, the, that these IIDs be monitored in the county of residence, or the yes. county that the person resides. Uh, unless by court order, and yeah. he never issued a court order. Yeah. Do we know, I, I, I acknowledge uh, ignorance on this one, I don't know how it fell to the Monroe County, uh, or, sorry, Ontario County Probation Office to monitor this case. It, it, it was brought up in testimony during the trial that uh, uh, it, it was done by letter, but it never actually, it was never stated by whom, who sent that letter and Well, I, I actually it. spoke, uh, spoke with you know, Mr. Eagleston, the, the prosecutor, afterwards, and, and he said what happened was, he said, you know, that the, the, the IID monitoring, you know, part of probation in Monroe County sent a letter to them and said basically, hey, can, can you, you know, take over the monitoring of this. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I believe also he said it was basically that it sounds as if it was something recommended by the county attorney's office based on his account of things uh, from Monroe County. Um, but that, but that but in and of itself is still improper. That's exactly. Improper I mean, transfer. it doesn't sound like either side, Monroe County or Ontario County, said, wait a minute, you know, we have to do a court order to make this happen. And, and, not, and, Mont and I asked the question of Monroe County yesterday, and they said, well, okay, we're, we're taking it back over now as we review the judge's decision, but now we're monitoring it. Yeah. So. Well, uh, for more on these stories, uh, check out uh, Gary's work, who's really done the lion's share of the work on both of these, both of these matters, uh, at democratandchronicle.com. You can also find my columns there. And uh, I hate to say it, but if history is any guide, uh, 
uh, both of these people will be in the news sometime soon. <laughs> I hope not, and you're, I wish them well. You're a columnist. You can say that. <laughs> I, hope, I hope not, and I, and I wish them well, yes. but I, I suspect that may be the case. Thanks for watching. Thank you.